Uh, Father, thank you for this day. We thank you for bringing John and Justine back. We do ask that we honor, we honor with our discussion today about biblical prophecy. In Jesus' name, amen. So, it's, uh, it's, it's good to be back in class, and it's good to have everyone here today as well. Uh, so, um, we're going over quiz number 23, and uh, Mrs. Grummer, you take uh, the question number one, please. That's right. They, 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 the, the Sadducees deny the resurrection and then spirits and angels. Billy, you had a thought yeah, about that. Uh, I, when I read that, angels and spirit, I can understand them rejecting the idea of an angel. But if they reject the idea of a spirit, doesn't that also mean that the, they have no hope or no promise for any, uh, uh, any afterlife? Yes, that, that would be what it would imply. Why, yeah. why would they practice any kind of a religion at all? They might as well just be an atheist then. They, sh they would be. I mean, basically that's what they are, aren't they? Yeah, uh, that sounds you know, like basically what they are. No hope. Uh, but the, um, that, that's, that's, why, that's why it's important for um, uh, it's important for us to understand a good, broad view of the Word of God. You know, that for us as Christians, believers, I mean, there are there are sectors of, of so-called small C Christianity that are doing the same thing. You know, your your mainline denominations. Yeah, I you knew know. a Jewish uh, person who felt that way. Okay. He participated in all the feasts, and he would pay a couple hundred dollars to go uh, to a synagogue on uh, on a holiday. Mm -hmm. uh, just, I guess, so he can go in there, look around, and say, hey, hmm. uh, and mentally say to himself, hey, look, I'm a Jew, too. Hmm. And I'm wondering why. Right. You know, yeah. if there's no hope, why? Mm -hmm. and, and if there's no hope, then how can uh, anyone reconcile that within themselves and just say there is no hope? I mean, it, it just goes out against everything that's built into us. It does. I mean, it, okay. it does. It makes, makes things... Very hard. Very good. Go, ahead, Jacob. With ritual, it, you know, uh, I heard this song, and the Jews were singing about ritual. It's habitual. You know, they they, they just go through the motions. Uh, they they don't have the understanding we have of it because they don't they don't have the spirit. They, they don't. They, it's that judicial blindness. Yeah, but how can they? they how earlier, can they? Suppose. How can they go through life that way? Uh, thinking that, uh, well, it doesn't matter if there's a God or not, I have no hope. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's how can right. you live that way? That, that's that's just that's very sad, isn't it? it? Very sad. I it mean, makes no sense at all. Yeah, yeah these two groups, these two, these two sectors within Judaism, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, I and mean, they both both classes of people had the problems. Both were blind to the fact that Jesus was the Messiah as a group. That is. Perhaps individual Pharisees understood the fact that Jesus was the Messiah, but as the whole group, for instance, they, they rejected Christ as the Messiah. Here we have the fulfillment of prophecy right before them, standing right before them, and they they turn their backs towards him, and they 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 have him crucified. And if, you know, and if, if there is no hope, um, there's no soul or spirit, uh, how can there be a right and a wrong? Exactly. Mm -hmm. that, that's right. You know, there, what's the standard for, for yeah. what purpose? Yeah, exactly. Why don't I, if there were, if I, I felt that there was no hope or anything, yeah. I might as well just step on people and mm -hmm. get to whatever I want. And that's what, that's uh, what, and and have no conscience of, or remorse exactly uh, towards them at all. I mean, that's what Paul records. You know, if you know, if there's if there's no resurrection, if there's no hope, then you yeah. know, <laughs> eat, drink, and be merry. You know, yeah, right. Uh, for, we die. for tomorrow, I mean, so the, the point is that, that that's you know we, there there is a hope of, of resurrection, and along with the, the hope of the resurrection, we also understand there is this this these judgments that are coming, judgments coming. People people today are not aware of this. People today want to they they man has given has been given credence. They've been given free will. They've been given they've been given the choice. That this is the right to choose. Also, they have the right to reject. Uh, what God is, what God's plan is. So, um, Mrs. Grummer, you could read number two, please. Oh, I think uh, she 
read number. Oh, oh wait, wait. She read did number, she number one. one. Then Jacob. Yeah, I think she did number one. Jacob, you do number two. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, what two classes of resurrections did the Apostle Paul cite? The resurrection of the just and the unjust. Two resurrections. The first. Resurrection and the resurrection. The first resurrection is. Then it goes. There's different steps in the first resurrection. The three steps we talked about last time in the first resurrection. You can break them up any way you want to, but we, we, we said there were three steps in the first resurrection. Um, in, 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 the, in the first step, there's two planks. You know, the Christ is the first roots. We have the, the, the rapture of the church. The, um, the second step, the second step, you have the, um, the two, the two uh, or the three planks. But anyway, we'll, we'll talk about this near, near the end. The question 25 brings this up again. But the two, the two main resurrections, the first resurrection, resurrection of the just, the second resurrection, the resurrection of, of the lost. Uh, John, number three, please. What doctrine dominated the preaching of the apostles? That would be the resurrection of Christ. The resurrection of Christ, that's right. That's the doctrine that dominated, um, which is very important. Like, like we were discussing before, I mean, that's the whole, the whole theme of everything, you know, he is the resurrection. The first fruits, and he was the example in which we uh, have hope towards. Right. I mean, without the resurrection, like we said previously, earlier, just a few minutes ago, there is no hope. That's right. You know, yeah. There's no hope. And so this, the Sadducees are was a hopeless group of people. So, and so are people today that do not believe in a resurrection. You know, uh, the resurrection is a very important doctrine in Scripture. Yeah, today the church just gives lip service to yes. it, and that's it. That's right. They don't really understand it. No, they so don't. therefore, the people sitting in the pews are not being taught properly. They don't understand. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, uh, Bill, next question. When resurrection is discussed in the New Testament, it is usually re uh, referenced a literal resurrection or spiritual resurrection. Literal. A literal. Well, always a literal. I mean, there was yeah. one example we cited that may have been referencing a spiritual, but, but just the that was just one. So it's a, it's a, it's a literal, a literal resurrection. Uh, number five. You want to try number five, Justine? I don't have paper. Oh, I can't wait for you. Okay, there we go. Ready, ready, ready for you. Ready made paper. What are the two types of resurrections that are anticipated within the scriptures? Within the scripture, Pentecost, within the scripture. Okay, and so there's the two types. Uh, we, we kind of touched on them before. The resurrection of life and the resurrection of the judgment, right? Uh, number six, please. What does Blackstone suggest the phrase from the dead implies? It implies that others, other dead are left. Yes, yeah, so when you have when you have used from the dead, it implies that there are you have a, you have a, have a you have a, a group that's still remaining. You know, you have a group that's um that's that that is still remaining. Uh, so Tammy, uh, number seven, please. Which resurrection pertains to the lost? The resurrection to damnation. Okay. The resurrection to damnation. So we have the first resurrection, the resurrection to life, which, and we have the second resurrection. The, res the first resurrection has the three steps we talked about, or perhaps we want to break it down. We can say that there's, we'll talk about that with, when we get to question 20, 25, and this resurrection to damnation, the second resurrection. All right, uh, Mrs. Grummer, number, number seven, please. Eight. Oh, pardon me, number eight. Number eight. Number eight. Who does Pentecost believe? The dead of Revelation. The dead of Revelation 20, 11, 12. See, number eight. I have those raised after damnation. Yeah, the second resurrection. Okay. Are those raised under damnation. Okay, that's good. Uh, number nine, Jacob, please. The resurrection unto damnation. That's right. And number 10, John, please. According to Pentecost, what doctrine is clearly taught in the Old Testament? That would be the resurrection. The resurrection. I mean, we look at, we look at the, you know, Lazarus' sister, you know, they, they, we know there was, there was always the resurrection taught in the Old Testament. Old Testament saints understood the resurrection. 
Number 11, Bill, please. Yeah, that resurrection was uh, not divided into just or unjust. That was right. simply a resurrection right. uh, that they knew of. Yeah, they, didn't have the, they didn't have particulars, but they knew there was a resurrection. I mean, Daniel, Daniel 12 talked about a resurrection. I mean, but, but even before, there, there was always this, this idea of a resurrection. They may have not understood how it was broken down, but they believed in a resurrection. Next one, Bill. That would be 11. Yes. Uh, what separates the two parts of the resurrection program? The millennium. The millennium. That separates the two, the two resurrections. Uh, let me see. Question number 12. You ready for that, Mr. Warren? Question number 12. Senorito. <laughs> no, that's not the right answer. No, it's yes, yes. No. No. You know, he said he no. No, it's the. It, I asked my first question was, "Are you ready for number 12? And he said, "Yes, he is." So he answered that's the right, right, right answer. He said, "Yes, yes." Uh, okay. Go ahead. Um, what specific school of thought had nice Baptist? Uh, uh, of thought denied the reality of the human body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Docetism. Oh, that was last week's. Oh, we're on, um, oh no. Number. This is 23. You failed today. This is number 23. Uh, <laughs> number 12. Do you have number 12 I with you? Look for the dates. That's what I have to do. You right. can look at this one if you want. Oh no. It doesn't have the answers on it, but. <laughs> right, Justine, you get um. I did it. You found it out for the day. Did you do it two weeks in a row? I can remember. Number 12, please. Yes. Who is the first? Who is the first fruits of them that slept? Of them that slept, yes. Yeah. Christ is the first fruits, right? Yeah. Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, number number thirteen, please. In the view of Pentecost, who is the battalion leader? Jesus Christ. Okay, Christ is the battalion leader. Uh, Tammy, number fourteen, please. Who is going to rise from the dead first? In First Thessalonians four sixteen. The dead in Christ. The dead in Christ. Yeah. Are going to rise. Betty Christ is going to rise first. Uh, let me see. Mrs. Grummer, number 15, please. 15. Yes. Who does Harrison believe are omitted from the resurrection? Uh, those who are not in Christ? That's right. Those that are not in Christ. They're omitted from the first resurrection. They have to wait till the end for the second resurrection. This one the, says the resurrection doesn't say first or second. Yeah, I said what resurrection? <laughs> okay, so um, but by by the okay, so okay, that's that's true. I understand. Uh, Harrison may not be quite clear on that, but uh, he says in uh, page four four, Harrison does unbelievers do not qualify. Um, right. right. Uh, so it's very clear. He's talking about the unsaved. And so it's only for the people that are in Christ that that would qualify for this. Um, let me see here. 16. 16. Let's see, whose turn is it for 16? Uh, so you're, 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 did you read uh, number 15? Do you do 16, Tammy, or 15? 15? Do you answer 15? Yes. Or you answer 15. Okay, so Jacob, you're 16. No, I answered. Wait, wait, wait. I answered wait. 14. Oh, wait a minute. So, wait a minute. So, who answered 15? I think uh, Mr. Warren. I did 14. I think it's my turn. Okay. I, I think Mr. Mr. Warren did it. it. Okay, Mrs. Grummer, you go, you go next. According to uh, mine, what is utterly contrary to the teachings of the Spirit? Uh, scripture. Uh, scripture. That, oh, that unbelief are in Christ. Right. Unbelievers cannot be in Christ. That's right. Um, now, Jacob, number 17 was kind of a, uh, a, a trick question here. So if you want to skip it and go to 18, you can. If you want to try to answer 17... We have to, you have to correct the answer, and then give me the answer to the correct answer. So give, what's, what's, either you go to 17, Jacob, or you go right to 18. Whatever you want to do. I think I can do 17. Okay. <laughs> okay. This, this Pentecost, believe we'll have a uh, simultaneous resurrection. That would be, because yeah, I think you have to go to the next page to do that, if I remember correctly. Okay. Uh, I don't think that's right because he was putting other opinions on that page. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are the Old Testament Old Testament saints and tribulation saints. That's good. Yeah, yeah, that's, I say yeah. Old Testament. Yeah, Old Testament. Testament. I, I put New Testament and Old Testament. 
Yeah, it's church saints and Old Testament saints. Okay. That's what I have, Old Testament church saints. Okay, let's... Uh, I think you better check your answer. Uh, let's get paid for it. Pastor. Okay, so, so, so my, my question, the defect of the question is... Um, who, who, is the choice of Israel being not in there? There should be a not in there. Who does Pentecost believe? Well, will not. Will not have a simultaneous resurrection. And so... Changes the question there. You know, so that's the... Um, and so it's um, you know, it's uh, the, the, the two groups. They cannot have a simultaneous resurrection. It's got to be it's got to be separate. The first resurrection and the second resurrection are two different resurrections. Uh, uh, John number eighteen. But but Jacob, your answer is Old Testament saints, New Testament saints. Pardon me, Old Testament saints and tribulation saints. That is that is the correct answer to my incorrect answer. My incorrect question. I'm sorry. Uh, number eighteen, John. Who, who will descend from heaven with a shout? It would be the Lord himself, Jesus Christ. Yes. So, in other words, number 17, that was, the question was rewarded wrong, and it was very confusing. So, Scratch uh, that we question. Did, we yes. Did good uh, we did not know that you intended to put the word not in there, though. I know you didn't know that. So, trick. Right. So I forgot my not. Um, Jacob, I think you should sue Dan for that, for not including <laughs> that. Mrs. Grummer, did you... We just have to understand that they're not going to do Number 19, Mrs. Grummer. White group of people have never experienced the baptismal, baptism of the Holy Spirit. Uh, what number was it? 19. Israelites. Israel. That's right. Uh, number 20, John. Who do the four and 20 elders represent? A uh, nation of Israel. I think on page 408, I think he, he wants to go with the, the represent the church. They represent, they, represent, they represent the church. I mean, there, we had this discussion earlier earlier on in the chapter, earlier on in the book. It was the dispute, okay, is it, is it the church? Is it half church, half Israel? But the Pentecost conclusion was these represent these are representatives of the church. I mean, there, there has been, there, had, there has been a, I mean, he, he may not get, well, in 408, he talks about it. Oh, I don't know where he talked about it earlier. Um, on 47. On page 4748. Four, he was talking about someone else's views. But but the idea of even earlier on in the book, early on in the chat in the book, I forget where it was. He discussed this as well. It was a good argument. Number twenty-one, Bill. According to Pentecost, what does not take place at the same time as the rapture, uh, the resurrection of Israel. That's right. The resurrection of Israel does not take place at the same. I got my not in there this time. Uh -huh. What does not take place at the same time, uh, Mister? War number 22, please. Who is going to rise first, the dead in Christ? The dead in Christ will rise first. Justine, number 23, please. What does Pentecost believe is impossible? Um, spiritually. <laughs> I don't know this. To Hop around, Mom. Hop around with number 23. 23. Spiritually. Uh, spiritualizing. Spiritualizing. Daniel 12, 2, and uh, something 26, 19. Isaiah. Mm -hmm. So the resurrection, uh, I can't read the right either. Church in Israel takes place at the second something. So you don't want to spiritualize I have these to passages. Look that up to read it. You don't want to spiritualize Daniel 12 and Isaiah 26. Uh, Tammy, number 24, please. Um, number one, when will Israel be resurrected at the second advent of Christ to the earth? And then number two, when will the church be resurrected at the rapture? At the rapture. So we have these two events are separated by the seven-year tribulation time period. And Mrs. Grummer, number 25. Excuse me, can I hear that answer again? Okay. Uh, okay. Just, just, just uh, one sec. Five stages. So we have first stage. We get the. I'll, I'll go through it. It is a lot. The first one is the resurrection of Christ. He's the first fruits. The resurrection of the church. Resurrection of the uh, tribulation saints. Resurrection of the Old Testament saints. And the second resurrection. The final resurrection. The resurrection of the unsaved. Um, that's the second resurrection. Uh, you had a question on number twenty-four. I wanted to hear the answer. Okay. When will Israel be resurrected? They'll be resurrected after the tribulation. 
Yeah, and the, the part, second part is one where the church be resurrected. They'll be resurrected before prior to, I the tribulation. Prior, okay, if you believe prior to, you can't. Prior to is the same same idea. So this is this is our, our quiz today on um, biblical prophecy. So good. So to today, last last week we we discussed about the um, the resurrections plural associated with the second coming, second advent. Today we're going to be discussing. The judgments, judgments plural, associated with the resurrection, were pardon me, associated with not the resurrection, associated with the second coming. We have here. Uh, we're going to be looking at, at, at these four different types of resurrection. But before we get into the specifics of it, we'll look at the um, some of the some some uh, scripture passages briefly that are anticipating uh, the resurrection. Um, we see in in, in Psalm 96, verse 13, the Bible says, Before the Lord, for he cometh to judge the earth, he shall judge the world with righteousness and the people with his truth. So we, even in the book of Psalms, we are told about judgment. We're told about his coming as well, but we're talking, told about this, this judgment that's coming. And this, this psalm is quoted in Acts 17, uh, Verse 31, and we're on, we're on page 412, I believe. Okay, thank you. And so, in John chapter 5, verse 24, the Bible says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Now, in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27, the Bible reminds us, And is appointed unto man once to die, but after this, the judgment. So these are just, a, there's more scriptures than that, but these are just a few scriptures that are talking about and discussing the resurrection. Um, now, as far as judgment's concerned, in 1 Corinthians 11, the scripture talks about how we're supposed to judge ourselves. How we're supposed to evaluate ourselves. Now, if we fail to evaluate ourselves, we fail to judge ourselves. This is on this is on a on another another level of judgment, judgment that takes place on this earth, in the sense of when we're still living. But in Hebrews chapter twelve, verse six, the Bible says, "For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth every son, pardon me, chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth." And so this is the purpose for we have to have you have self-evaluation, examining ourselves. If we fail to examine ourselves, then God's going to we'll be punished, we'll be judged to a certain degree. The judgments we're going to be talking about later on this, this afternoon are going to be talking about judgments. That we're talking about the four different classes of judgments. Uh, we'll, be, we'll be getting to uh, shortly. We're going to be talking about, it's okay, uh, we're going to be talking about various judgments. The judgments of uh, the nation Israel, the judgments of nations, the judgment of, of fallen angels, and the great white throne judgment. Now, what's what's missing from here is that we have the the bema judgment, which is which is a kind of a different type of judgment than these other judgments. These judgments um, primarily deal with Judgment, judgments of the lost, judgments of the damned, perhaps with the exception of the judgment of the nations. The judgments of the nations are unique in the fact that it's divided into two groups. You have a group of the sheep, you have a group of the sheep group and the goat group. And that's the exception. But the judgment that comes <coughs> is always upon... The lost, always upon those that have rejected Christ or we have rejected God, with the, with the, with the exception of the judgment of the angels. The angels had to rebel; they went their own way. Um, they wanted to do their own thing. They wanted to follow what Lucifer wanted to follow. And so, in, in, in Matthew 25, talks about this judgment of nations, the sheep and the goats. Um, in Zechariah chapter 13. The Bible says, uh, And it shall come to pass that in the land 
saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third part shall be left therein. And I will bring the third part through the fire, and we refine them as fire as silver is refined, and I will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name, and I will, I will hear them. I will say, it is my people, and they say, shall say, the Lord is my God. Earlier on in Ezekiel, or rather later on in Ezekiel, talking about in Ezekiel 20, Ezekiel 20, verse 38, the scripture says, I will purge out from among you the rebels and them that transgress against me, and I will bring them forth out of the country where they sojourn. They shall not enter into the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So we have these these, these different types of judgments that are going to be occurring. Um, the prophet Joel, in Joel chapter 3 and verse 16, the scripture records, The Lord also shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem, and the heavens and the earth shall shake, but the Lord will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. And, of course, uh, we have the passage there in Matthew uh, talking about the judgments of nations. This is the first grouping of judgments he's going to be talking about in this chapter. But the judgment of nations, in, in, on page 413, you know, as far as this is future judgment, the judgment program, something get get us future, and it's for Israel. Now, if we have judgments for Israel that are being talked about, that are being discussed, that are yet future, then we have a future for Israel. We have we have to we have to reject the concept as we talked about earlier on in our earlier classes. We have to reject the concept of uniting Israel and the church. Israel and the church are two separate groups. They shouldn't they do, they do not need to be brought together. They are two separate groups. And when we're, when we're discussing Matthew 25, this group is is specifically for Israel. This, this judgment of the nations is a judgment of, of the nations. pardon me, the judgment of the nations, I'm sorry, the judgment of the nations. The nations or judgment of Israel? I'm talking about, I'm talking about the um, judgment of the nations, but within the context of the judgment of the nations, which I don't mean to confuse you, I'm sorry, which I did, but within the context of the judgment of nations, in, 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 the, um, in the text, in Matthew, um, you know, Pentecost says on page 413, he says there's a future judgment program. And when I'm, when I'm talking about having the distinction between Israel and the church, we cannot um, mix up the two. But the judgment begins with Israel. Now, there, as, as, was, as you said, Tammy, there is a distinction between the judgment of Israel and the judgment of the nations. Question. Yes. Are the two uh, first parables about the judgment of Israel, and then when it talks about the judgment of the nations, that's referring to the judgment of, of the Gentile nations. Yes, at the, at, that, at the end of the one... one yeah, uh, that was chapter 25. Right, that's right. So there, there is, there is this distinction that has to be taken place. So we have... The, we know that the tribulation time period is, is, is Daniel's 70th week, a time where God is he's, he's, provide, he's doing two things, in a certain sense. He's providing opportunity for Israel to accept the Messiah, but yet there's also judgment that's taking place upon them. Uh, now, in, in Romans chapter 9, verse 6, uh, the Bible says, Not as though the word of God had taken none effect, for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. Now, when does this judgment take place for the nation of Israel? Um, now, in Matthew 24, the Bible says, And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together of his elect from the four winds, from the one end of heaven to the other. Now, the angel is coming and he's gathering these um, these people in Matthew 24. And then further on in, in Matthew 24, we know it's so the Bible says, so for the coming of the Son of Man be. Now, this has not, some people mix 
this passage up in Matthew 24, they, mix, they mis mistake it, and they, they identify it as the rapture of the church, an event that takes place prior to the tribulation. This passage in Matthew 24 has reference to an event that takes place near the end of the tribulation. It's an event that takes place at the, near the end of the tribulation. Essentially, we could say it's at the end of the tribulation. It's a transitional event that takes place between the tribulation and the millennium. Uh, and so we have to understand the chronology. Um, the chronology. Uh, so he says on page 413, he talks about this chronology. He says, in this carefully developed chronology of events, the judgment of Israel follows the second advent of Christ to the earth and the conquest regathering of Israel as a nation. So this is on page page 413. Uh, maybe I have the wrong page, I'm sorry. No, that's 413, about the middle. Middle yeah. of, uh, at the end of the second paragraph. At the end of the second paragraph. End of the second paragraph. See that? Um, I'm sorry. Uh, but if you find it, though, right? Now, as far as the place of the judgment, now we have, again, we do not want to confuse the events in Matthew 24 with the rapture of the church. The rapture of the church is when, when we meet the Lord Jesus Christ in the clouds, in the air. It's for the church. Anyone that's, that's born again and saved, it's a New Testament event. The annual 70th week, in a certain sense, the tribulation period is a resumption of the time of law. Uh -huh. We got to get that those last the last seven years in, which is the time of law, and after which we have the second coming of Christ, or as we sometimes have called, we have the phase one of Christ's second coming is when we meet him in the clouds. Phase two of the second coming is when he comes down physically to the earth. The second coming proper when Christ's feet touches down upon the Mount of Olives, and so it, it, this is the this is the event. That's taking place. This is the event that's being described here in, in Matthew 24. Also, in Zechariah 14. In Zechariah 14, in verse 4, and his feet, referring to the Jehovah's feet, or the Lord Jesus Christ's feet, and his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof, toward the east and toward the west, and there shall be a very great valley, and half of the mountain shall be removed toward the north, and half of the mountain shall be removed towards the south. So we have the mountain of Mount of Olives. Mount of Olives will be a um, a range, a mountain range, or of a sort that would run north and south. And then when we have that north and south splitting, we have a valley that runs east and west. So. This this is what is this is what's occurring and Zechariah 14 parallel was with Matthew 24 a physical return of Christ to the earth Amen. a physical return mm -hmm. now some people um, the passage in Ezekiel some people like to spiritualize things uh, some people more more than others. some people do it by mistake some people do it deliberately some people just don't know any better or this is the direction they go. A lot of times the people that like to combine, many people that combine Israel and the church like to spiritualize many things. But Pentecost says on page 413, he says it cannot be spiritualized as to teach a judgment of souls at death or something or some or something or something like that. Since the Lord must be where he is. You know, the passage, the passage in Ezekiel chapter 20, it's a, it's a actual literal judgment of a bodily judgment. It's not a spiritual judgment. It's a, it's a real judgment. And so, the reason why you have to have a, a judgment of a, not a spiritual judgment, but actually a literal judgment, is because you cannot have the, again. This is the transitional time period between tribulation and the millennium. At the beginning of the millennium, we cannot have unredeemed, or these, as, as Pentecost puts in the rebels, entering into the millennium. At the beginning of the millennium, all we will have is people who are 
believing that Lord, Lord Jesus Christ is Messiah, there will be only tribulation saints who enter the millennium along with glorified saints of the church and of the tribulation and of the Old Testament. So we have Old Testament saints and tribulation saints along with New Testament saints, church age saints, that are living alongside of or living with, entering into the millennium with these tribulation saints. Now when I say the tribulation saints, we have tribulation saints that have been martyred and tribulation saints that have not been martyred. The ones that are entering are the human ones. The human ones plus the ones that have been glorified. We have glorified tribulation saints, glorified Old Testament saints, glorified church age saints. These are the groupings of people that are going to be inside, who are going to be in the millennium. Are going to be in the millennium. Now as far as how is the judgment going to take place? Now, part of the judgment is separating the two groups, separating the saved from the unsaved, or the redeemed from the not from the reprobates. The redeemed, the tribulation saints, that will enter in to the millennium and reign with Christ, alongside of the glorified saints from any from the previous dispensations. From that is from the time of law, including the glorified saints from the time of tribulation, and also and also from the age of the church. Now as far as the results, as far as the results of this judgment is concerned, over on page uh, uh, page four fifteen, four fourteen near the bottom, there's two things that are happening. We have the unsaved are cut off from the land, and the saved are taken into the millennial blessing of the land. So these two things are what ha are what's or what's happening in uh, in this event, this in this particular judgment. We have one is prevented from going in, one group of people, and another group of people are which are the or, or the tribulations. They they are permitted, they are they are permitted to go in, and so. We have a question. Yes, I'm uh, going to turn the page. I got all lost. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, what do you mean a prevented? Per permitted. Permitted. One group permitted? is prevented. The other group is permitted. Yeah, I heard the Prevented, two. permitted. Who was per to go in where I got when I changed the page? To I enter into the millennial okay, well, time who period. Okay, what was prevented? The rebels, the lost, Jews. the goats. The, the Jews. Are you, about, are you talking about the judgment of Israel? Um, in, in, as far as we have, is the sheep and the goats. Right. Okay. The goats. I guess I got lost. I thought, I thought we were talking about the judgment of Israel. Well, the, the, well we are. But, but in the sense, in the kind of in one... Right. We, the, so the, 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 the sheep, Israel, are permitted to enter into the millennium. Are you, you, you understand or not? No? The, sheep, the sheep of Israel? I, I thought the sheep and the goats were the judgment of the nations. I, it's all right. Just don't pay attention. I just didn't know what people... Right, but, they're, but that judgment is also dealing with individuals instead of the nation as a whole. I, I understand that, but, but there's judgment on Israel that he's drawing a distinction in. Um, yes, he is in the book. Mm -hmm. and, and even in Matthew 25, those first two parables are talking about the judgment of the nations. It's not until... Verse 31 or 32 or somewhere in there where he actually says uh, the judgment of the nations. It actually says in Matthew, nations. Mm -hmm. um, and then it talks about sheep and goats. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm just asking. Right. I'm sorry. I was a little distracted because I was doing something else. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to distract you. I'm no, sorry. you didn't. Okay. I, I distracted uh, myself. On the bottom of page 4, 5, 414 and the top of page 454. Four, Bottom of page 414 and the top of page at the top of page 415, he said there's a twofold result of this judgment. You see that at the bottom of page 414? Yes, uh-huh. Now see the see the number one Arabic one that's in so parentheses Arabic one. The first, the unsaved are cut off from the land. That's the first it's a result. It's a result of the judgment. Referring to the Jews. Right. And the second result, Arabic two, a couple couple lines later, a couple sentences later. 
See that Arabic too? Yes. On page 415, he says, In the second place, the saved, the saved are taken into millennial blessing, meaning the saved referring to the tribulation saints. Now, moving on to the judgment of the, of the Gentiles. And so he talks about the chronology on Matthew 24 and Matthew 25. Uh, as far as these judgments that are taking place. And the Son of Man is coming in his glory. Uh, in the universe, Matthew, 20, Matthew 25, verse 34, Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Um, and so then it, then it goes then it, in verse 40, And the king shall answer and say unto them, for I say unto as much as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. And then, then he says, Depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepare for the devil and his angels. And then later on, talking to the sheep, in verse, down in verse 45, the Bible says, Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily, verily, I say unto you, and inasmuch as ye did it unto one of the least of these, ye did it unto me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but righteousness into eternal life. So one group, it was a separation between the two, a separation um, between both of those. Now, as far as the place of this judgment, it's interesting how he identifies different places. Now, we don't want to get down too, too, too involved in all the details. Sometimes we wonder, well, is it, he, makes, he makes good arguments for the locations. Not necessarily talking about these early judgments, but the, but the later judgments. But as far as the judgments, the, the angels and the great white throne judgments. But he makes a, but makes a good argument for why the place of these those two judgments are where they are. But we're not there yet. We'll get there soon here. But as far as the place, um, we know the Lord Jesus Christ comes down at the second coming physically to the Mount of Olives. And so the place of this particular these, these, this judgment is going to be here, or actually on the earth, where Christ is. Now, he has a discussion here as far as the valley of Jehoshaphat. Now, in the book of Joel, in Joel chapter 3, verse 2, Scripture talks about this valley of Jehoshaphat. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat, and I will plead with them and their for my people and for my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. And so it's going to be, the judgment is going to take place in the valley of Jehoshaphat. Now, interesting, he had this discussion, where could this valley be? Now, some people think it's going to be in the Valley of Baraka, um, where, where Jehoshaphat defeated the Moabites and Ammonites. Actually, the Moabites and Ammonites just, just killed themselves off. You know, if we, if we look at the passage here in, in 2 Chronicles 20, um, they just, they just, they destroyed, uh, one another in, in verse, um, 23. You know, the Bible says, for the children of the Ammonites and the Moabites stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Sir until God will just delight to destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Sir, everyone helped to destroy one another. So they, they were basically killing each other off. But in other words, this is one possibility. Now, another possibility was, um, he mentioned another valley. He talks about in, in um, the valley of Zechariah, well, um, I'm not sure where he talks about this. Kindred? Kindred the Kindred Valley. He kind of talks about the Kindred, the Kindred Valley. Kindred Valley is a valley that's between where Mount Moriah and we have the Mount of Olives. It's a valley, and Mount Moriah is where the Temple Mount is, where the Temple is. Mount Moriah, and, and we have Mount Moriah that would be, I guess, on the and between Mount Moriah, Mount Moriah, be, to, Mount, Mount, the Mount of Olives is to the east of Mount Moriah, and between the Mount of Olives. And Mount Moriah, which is where the temple is, we have this Kidron Valley. And there's, there's some thought that perhaps this valley that's being discussed about is the Kidron Valley. Kidron Valley. Maybe it is, maybe it's not. But what Pentecost is postulating, which I think is, which I would go along with this one, that 
it's a valid that does not exist as of yet. The very fact of, of the valley that's created by the return of Christ, that's the valley that's going to be um, become the valley of Jehoshaphat. Because he says over on page, I guess page 417, Jehoshaphat means Jehovah judges. Jehovah judges. And what takes place on the Mount of Olives is essentially it's the beginning of the judgment of Jehovah. Now as far as the subjects of the judgment. Now it's it's a an individual, we say. Those, he says over on page 417, he says, it is to be observed that those brought into this judgment are living individuals, not the dead that have been resurrected and brought to judgment. So we have, it's a judgment of living individuals. Of living individuals. And so, no, it's it's a it's a judgment, as he says over on page four seventeen. It's a judgment of living Gentiles at the second advent of Christ. That's who's being judged. Now, the basis of the judgment of this particular judgment on page four seventeen, Pentecost says, the basis on which judgment is meted out. Of the judgment is the treatment received by a group called my brethren. How has this group been treating? What have they done to treat this group? How have they behaved toward this group called my brethren? Meaning redeemed Israel. Those people that have accepted the, the witness of 144,000 primarily, it's going to be Jews. There will be some, I believe, some Gentiles that will accept the message of 144,000. But primarily, the ministry of the 144,000 and the two witnesses is going to be for Jew, the Jewish population. Not that not the, not the Gentiles can't accept it, but it's how the judgment, this judgment we're talking about is how the, my brethren have been treated. And in, in other words, it's a, it's a, it's a this is who the, who's the recipients of this judgment. Over page 418, Pentecost says, It is to be observed from Joel 3.2 that, that Israel is the very center of the whole judgment program. In looking, at the, looking into the book of Joel, Joel chapter 3, verse 2, I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and I will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. See, there's been, as you know, there's going to be great persecution during the time of tribulation, particularly in that second half of tribulation. The restrainer is going to be removed. The church is going to be absent. We have the, the government that's going to be set up, the false government that's going to be set up, the Antichrist, the beast, the false prophet, the Antichrist, they're going to do many things in their human strength that's going to persecute anyone that will not accept them entirely as essentially almost in the place of God. And so there's going to be the human persecution. Furthermore, there's going to be this, this the, uh, once we reach the second half of the tribulation, once that covenant is broken, that three and a half year, probably that seven year covenant is broken. Three and a half years into the seven year peace treaty, we're going to have judgment coming from God upon the inhabitants of the earth. But see, this this judgment is focused upon the people who are against Israel, against Israel at this time. It's going to be a judgment for them and against the, the, the people that are that are lost. As Pentecost observes, and as I've said before, there's going to be this remnant. He says over page 418, according to the book of Revelation, God will seal a believing remnant of 144,000 at the beginning of the tribulation period. They will, be, they will be a witnessing remnant for the entire period, and the fruits of their ministry are described in Revelation 7, 9 to 17, where a great multitude is seen as have been redeemed. The brethren 
are evidently these same believing witnesses of the tribulation period. Some of these brethren are already are going to be martyred. And we see them in heaven. In uh, Psalm, probably not Psalm, in Revelation 7. Revelation 7, in verse, near the end of verse 9. Um, uh, probably not in verse, uh, verse um, end of verse uh, 14. These are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. But there's going to be a group that were not pers- that, were, that, that, that were not martyrs in the tribulation period. A good group of people. A lot of people, we know that 50, about 50% of the inhabitants of the earth are going to be killed by the plagues, at least, by the, at least 50% by the plagues of the revelation. Some of those people are going to be believers, going to be tribulation saints. Others will be non-tribulation saints, the reprobates. The, these, this, this judgment is just based, based upon the plagues that come. It's not based upon the, the torture, the persecution that comes from the beast, the false prophet, and the Antichrist. So there's going to be a lot of persecution going on on the earth during the time of the tribulation period. But the events of this judgment take place at the end of the tribulation period. When the Lord comes back, Lord Jesus Christ comes back, physically places his feet upon the Mount of Olives. And a valley is created. And this could be, could be very well the valley of Jehoshaphat that's created. A valley of Jehovah Judges. And it's this judgment that takes place that will introduce his millennial reign. The millennial reign will last will last for 1,000 1, years. And he will reign literally on this earth for 1,000 years. Over on page 419, he says, Those who accept their gospel, meaning the gospel of the 144,000, and those who reject their gospel, reject the message. The Lord hath said, Except ye can be, be, be converted, and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. This gospel of the kingdom requires personal faith and a new birth. It's personal, it's individual. A personal faith and new birth. Such faith and new birth were best evidenced by the works which they produced. And he's got he's got a quote here from Peters and from Gabelin. Um, but the idea, when we have it over on page 420, he says, since the message required faith and a result in new birth, those being judged as to their response to the message must be judged on the personal basis of their individual responses. So in other words, we have the message, the gospel being presented by the 144,000. And the people that are being judged here, we have, uh, there must be an individual salvation. And there's going to be people that are going to be there present during this judgment. They're in the, they're in the Valley of Jehoshaphat, where Jehovah judges. Right after Christ comes back to this earth, there's going to be this judgment that takes place for them. And they're going to be judged because they've rejected the gospel, essentially. They rejected the gospel that was presented to them in the tribulation period. Again, it's individual. You know, he says on page 420, Pentecost does, Scripture teaches that no unsaved person will enter into the millennium. And so this judgment that has to take place before the millennium is a judgment that will prohibit and forbid the lost people, lost individuals from coming into the millennium. You know, in, in John chapter 3, you know, the scripture, scripture is clear. Talking to Nicodemus, he says, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God, in particular, has reference to the millennial kingdom. Don't let people get you confused with saying the kingdom of God means something else. Kingdom of God, in its denotative meaning, in its precise, accurate theological meaning, has reference to the millennial kingdom. And here Christ was talking to Nicodemus and says, 
You, a man must be born again to enter into the kingdom of God. Now over at page 321. 321. 321. Oh, pardon me. 421. Thank you. Okay. Over on page 421. Over on page 421. Pentecost says, this is like a point three. Arabic 3 with a little, little parenthesis 3. Since it cannot be shown anywhere in Scripture that a person is given eternal life on a works basis, we must conclude it must be individual judgment. Individual judgment. And looking at the book of Jude, verses, verse 14 in the book of Jude, and Enoch also the seventh from Adam prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousand of his saints, to execute judgment upon all, and to convince all that are ungodly upon them, and all their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed, and of all their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. So this is Enoch. Going back, he's mentioned early on in the book of Genesis, Enoch. He lived 365 years, and he was not, for God took him. He walked with God. Enoch did. But yet he prophesied of this. He prophesied of this, this judgment that's coming. He prophesied how the Lord was coming. I have reference to the second coming of Christ. To the earth. To the physical, literal earth. We're, on, we're, we're just on, we just, I just read something from page 421, Arabic 3, in parentheses. Later on in page 41, he says, in each of these instances, which depict the same process of judgment in separating the unsaved from the saved prior to the millennium, it is an individual judgment. It's an individual judgment, a separation of the saved from the unsaved, from the tribulation saints to the tribula tribulation reprobates, or those that have rejected what the, what the gospel was of the, of the two witnesses, and of the 144,000. People are, people are continually rejecting the gospel. Now they, want, they, want to, they want to identify the Lord Jesus Christ as anybody, anyone else but the Messiah. <coughs> anyone, anyone else but the Messiah. Now, it deals with individuals. You know, it's individuals. You now in Matthew chapter 25, in verse 34, near the end of that verse, the Bible says, Come ye blessed of my Father, in, in, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Now the results of this judgment, over on page 422, the results of this judgment, one result, one group we have, he says on page 422, he says, The one group is taken into the kingdom to become subjects of the king, while the other group is excluded from the kingdom, and consigned to the lake of fire. This group taken into the kingdom fulfills the prophecies of Daniel 9, 7, pardon me, Daniel 7, 14, Isaiah 55, 5, Micah 4, 2, that state that a group of Gentiles will be brought under the king's reign, even though this is Israel's kingdom. So there will be some Gentiles, some Gentiles in this tribulation period. Gentiles, perhaps, obviously Gentiles will come out of the age of Grace will live through the tribulation time period. And while they're in the tribulation period, they will respond to the gospel. Now, I think the people, the Gentiles that respond to the gospel would have to be Gentiles that have perhaps never heard the gospel directly before. There may, there may, be, there may be a few exceptions here or there. But I, but, but I think it, primarily it's those that have not heard the gospel before. We're in uh, page 422. Jacob, I missed what you said. Did you say exactly? Oh, yes, sir. Uh, I was thinking of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Okay. Uh, I think it's uh, 9 through 12, right around there. All right. And you heard us all the gospel message, and it, it don't look good for them there in that 2 Thessalonians chapter no. 2. Strong, strong delusion. I think that's just a backup, Bill. Okay. But, but thanks for noticing it. Um, I mean, provided the other one doesn't give us problems. But, um... Yeah, that's right, Jacob. Strong delusions. Strong delusions. Now, in, in Daniel 7, 14, uh, the Bible says, And there will be given him dominion and glory and a kingdom 
that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom, that which shall not be destroyed. And in Isaiah 55, 5, the Bible says, Behold, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not, and nations that knew not thee shall run unto thee because of the Lord thy God and for the Holy One of Israel, for he hath glorified thee. Again, I'm referencing to this nation, this group of people that, that have no, they're not necessarily of Israel, but yet God is going to allow their hearts to be open to the gospel in the tribulation period. And they'll be able to enter in to the, enter into the millennial period with as a tribulation saint. And in Micah chapter 4 verse 2, the scripture says, And many nations shall come and say, Come, and let us go up to the mountains of the Lord, and to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us his ways, and will walk in his paths. For the law shall go forth of Zion, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. So this, this is a wonderful opportunity people, Gentiles, in the tribulation period will have. Gentiles have a wonderful opportunity now. Jews have a wonderful opportunity now. Anyone, any individual has a wonderful opportunity now to trust the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior. They can do that today if they want to. Believe in them what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for them upon the cross of Calvary. They have the, the, the fact that they are they're dead in the trespasses and sin, but yet Christ has died for them. And they must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, the scripture says in Acts 16.31, when the Philippian jailer asked Paul and Silas, who were in the prison, Sirs, what must I, be, what must I do to be saved? They said, uh, he said, they, he, they, they answered and said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. An offer given to the Philippian jailer of salvation. And also an offer given to the house of the flipping jailer as well. Now, as far as the fallen angels are concerned, on four, page 422, there's, there's, there's fallen angels. Now, who are the fallen angels? The fallen angels are those angels that followed Satan in his rebellion out of heaven. The angels fell one time. There wasn't a progression of angels falling. It happened once. A one-time event, these angels fell. And they're still fallen. And there's different groupings of these angels that are dealt with in different ways. But as, for, for as far as an overall judgment of the angels, Jude chapter, Jude verse 6, the scripture says, And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains, un, uh, chains under darkness until the judgment of that great day. So a certain class or group of, grouping, grouping of angels are reserved in chains and are, are restrained for this judgment that's coming. Now as far as the time element, when it's going to take place, he says on page 422, these angels are evidently associated with Satan in his judgment, which is seen to precede the great white throne of Revelation 20, verse 10. Again, the placement of the great white throne. He'll, he'll, give, a, he'll give a comparison between the, the judgment of the nations and the great white throne. Parallel, I'll purpose telling them why they're not the same thing. One takes place prior to the millennium, the 1,000-year millennium. The other one takes place prior to the millennial state. In Revelation 20, verse 10, Scripture records, And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And so the fallen angels are going to be judged after the age of the millennium. But Pentecost is saying, but just prior to the Great White Throne. The Great White Throne is a transitional time 
between the millennial age and the eternal state. And Pentecost places the judgment of the angels in the, in the sphere in which they live, someplace between heaven and earth. These angels are, are being judged in the sphere in which they abide and live. Because, the, you know, they're, 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 they're spirit beings. And so whatever sphere they're, they're abiding and living in, this is the location in which and where which they will be judged. And these are the angels that are, the angels that are being judged are the ones that sinned. The ones of their own volition chose to follow Lucifer. The ones that chose to rebel with him. He wanted, Lucifer wanted to, to be something big. He wanted to be, be greater than the Most High God. But yet, and his angels, they went along with him. As far as the basis of this judgment. Now, if you look at what, what, what Lucifer wanted in Isaiah chapter 14. Isaiah 14, verse 13. Well, going back to verse 12. The scripture says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which did weaken the nations? He weakened the nations. For how hast thou in thine heart, how hast, pardon me, for how hast said, for, pardon me, for thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mountains of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High God. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly speak, shall narrowly look upon thee, and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that, that the earth trembled, that did shake kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened, and opened, out, the, opened out the houses of his promises, brother of his prisoners? And so Isaiah chapter, chapter 14, this is, the, this is the description of, of Lucifer, how he rebelled, how he fell. And it was a group of angels that followed him. He had this, this problem. He said, I will, I will. He had the, this pride problem. You know, and we have to be careful of pride ourselves. But Lucifer, you know, he, he, was, he was sitting in the sides of the north, the scripture says. Now, where, where, where will he eventually sit? He'll, he'll be sitting by the sides of, of a lake of fire. He'll be sitting there, a place of torment. This is where we're in Isaiah chapter 14, verses uh, 12 to 17, or on page 423. As far as the results, we know not only does Isaiah 14 talk about this, but we also have Revelation chapter 20 discussing this. Revelation 20 on page 423. And the devil that was deceived I mean, the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night, forever and ever. And so we have, now notice, prior to the devil being cast into the lake of fire, we see the beast and the false prophet are already there. Their judgment preceded his judgment. As far as the great white throne judgment is concerned, in Revelation 20, verse 11, the scripture says, And I saw a great white throne, and the him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heavens fled away, and there was no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of the things which were written in the books according to their works. The great, 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 the great white throne... It's the final place for all the reprobates, all those that have rejected the redemption plan of God throughout all ages, throughout all dispensations, will come and be judged. This great white throne, its termination, as Pentecost says, it terminates, it constitutes, he says on page 423, it constitutes the termination of God's resurrection and judgment program. So we have these programs we discussed earlier. 
Got a question, Tammy? No, I'm just holding my book up. Okay, you can do that. <laughs> All right. That's over on page 423. Now, as far as the time of the judgment, um, <clears throat> this judgment takes place at the end of the millennium. You know, in Revelation 20, verse 5, but the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. And then again, we, we have later on in chapter 20, we saw the presentation of the great white throne. As far as the place of this, Pentecost believes that this judgment, the great white throne, takes place somewhere between heaven and and earth. Now, some some believe it would just take place in the earth. But Pentecost is saying it takes place between heaven and the earth. Which, he can believe that if he wants to. I'm not necessarily, it's, it's perhaps I've never really considered before where it takes place. I consider it takes place on the earth. But Pentecost believes it takes place between the heaven and the earth. But the location of the of the judgment, the location of the where the great way through takes place, that's in, that's that's really not a complex that doesn't really matter. It's not consequential as far as as far as what is happening there. The events that happen there is um is what matters. Now we have the dead. The dead of all time period. Excuse me. And what, where is that in there about that in between place? That's what Revelation 20:11. Revelation 20:11. And so we have. H423b. You see it there? Yeah, I see it. I meant that in between spot. Mm -hmm. 4:23, I believe. It's, it's 4:23b, place of judgment. You see 4:23b? He's getting it from Revelation 20 verse 11. Revelation 20. Never mind, don't hold the whole class up for me. In verse 11. Revelation 20, verse 11 says... You see, okay, number you see 423? Capital B. It's a point in the outline. It's down at the bottom. In Revelation oh, 20. Okay, all right, I got it. Thank you. I don't it, think it really says that. No. I, I, would, I would, you well, know, but, it's, but it's... Can I... Please make a comment, Tim. Can I read it? Read Revelation 20, 2011. And I saw a great white throne... And him that sat on it, from whose face all the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. So he's 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 focusing on that phrase, from whose face the heaven and the earth fled away. He's looking, he's looking he's reading, reading reading verse eleven very closely. You know, heaven and earth they both they both fled away, and so that's that's how he's coming with it between heaven and earth. Also present at this great way from not only have the, we have the, the the people that have rejected Christ from all times that have died, we also have the, the millennial inhabitants of the millennium who have rejected what Christ has done as well. There would be some living human beings who have were born in the millennium, but yet have never, never trusted Christ. These people will also be at this great way throne judgment as well. These people that are that have been that were that they were born in the millennial time period, but yet they never turned to Christ for redemption for, for their for their salvation. They too will be judged at the Great White Throne, along with all the reprobates that have died throughout all time. From the from the from the, the first day of creation until that very point. They will be judged as well. As far as the basis for this judgment, over on page 423, Pentecost says, This is rather a judgment on the evil works of the unsaved. The sentence of the second death is passed upon them. This is, this is their judgment upon the works of the unsaved, of the fact that they rejected Christ. That's just the backup, I think. So, uh, is, is the other one going? Mm -hmm. And so we have, he talks about Revelation 20 again. You know, as far as Revelation 20, verse 12, at the end of that verse, uh, Revelation, Revelation 20, verse 12, 
and I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. According to their works. Over page 424, it talks about the spiritual death and versus the, the eternal death. Pentecost says on page 424, he says, But the sentence of the second death was passed on all. The first death was the spiritual death which was suffered in Adam. The second death is the confirmation and making eternal that separation from God which the first death entailed. And as far as the result of this judgment... It's going to be eternal separation from God. Um, in Revelation 20, verse 15, Whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Eternal separation is coming. For all those who rejected Christ in the past, and all those who are currently rejecting Christ that will die in their sins, and for those people yet in the future, who reject Christ. This is what's going to be coming to them and for them. Over page 49, he wants... 425? Pardon me, yes. <laughs> yeah, 425, thank you. I'm just... Thank you. Over, right. over page 425... I understand. Just want to check. Thank you. Over page 425, he's trying to distinguish between the judgment that takes place prior to the millennium and the judgment takes place after the millennium. Not only do people think that the events of Matthew 24 are synonymous with the rapture of the church, the meaning of the clouds, they also think that the, the events of these judgments are the same as the great white throne judgment. They're confusing these judgments. There's no resurrection and he talks about this on page 425. He talks about many comparisons. But he says, there are a number of distinctive distinctions between these two judgments, which makes it impossible to make them the same judgment. In Matthew, there is no resurrection before the judgment, but only a gathering of his elect. Well, in Revelation, there is a resurrection of all the wicked. He says this on page 425. Again, on page 425, he says, in Matthew, the nations are judged, but in Revelation, it could not be... But, but it, it could not be of national entities for heaven and earth have fled away. And since the nations are confined to the earth, the same event could not be described. Again, in Matthew, the judge is seated on the throne of his glory, but in Revelation, he's seated on a great white throne. Again, Pentecost says on page 425, in Matthew, the coming of Christ precedes the judgment, but in Revelation, no coming is mentioned. The reason being, Christ is already here on this earth for the millennium, his millennial reign. In Matthew, the Son of Man has three classes of men he's dealing with, sheep, goats, and brethren. But in Revelation, there's only the one class. In Matthew... There was no millennial era proceeding. But in Revelation, there is a millennial era that proceeds. Era that proceeds. Over page 426, Pentecost rightly says, the second advent, that's when he comes to the earth physically, puts his feet down on the Mount of Olives, the second advent is a climactic event in the program of God. It is climactic for the program for the earth, and the earth can rejoice in its lifting of the curse. Such an event can be minimized, cannot be minimized, nor deleted from the rightful place in God's program of the ages. So, this is our four judgments that Pentecost discussed in this chapter. The judgments, plural, that are associated with the second advent of Christ. Again, we have to understand that for the judgment of angels, the great white throne judgment, we have it's the belief of a millennium that's between those two. So, uh, Mrs. Grommer, some thoughts you have about this uh, this chapter, please. Well, uh, there's a lot of different 
judgments there. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. A lot of different judgments. Yes, sir. That's, that's about all I can say. Individual judgments is very interesting, and uh, there are a lot of different judgments. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's right. How about you, Jacob? Some thoughts you might have? Oh, yes, sir. Uh, I heard a, a quote from our community organizer and chief, okay. one of them, uh, our president. Yes. My salvation depends on collective salvation. Mm -hmm. He and, said that. Who said know, that? Uh, I wanted to point out something here Oklahoma. in Zechariah 14. 44. 9 through 12. And the mm -hmm. Lord shall be king over all the earth in that day, and there shall be one Lord and his name one. And the land shall be turned into a plain from Eba to Reven south of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. It shall be lifted up and have a place from Benjamin's gate into the place of the first gate of the corner gate, mm -hmm. the tower of Ananiel. And men shall dwell in it, and there shall be no more utter destruction. Jerusalem shall be safely inhabited. And this is the plague wherewith the people, wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. I think that this, this chapter is the most literal description of what will happen to these people who come into the kingdom mm -hmm. uh, in an unsafe state in their physical bodies. Right, that's right. What, where is that? I would remind you of the reference again, Jacob, for that place Tammy was asking. That is Zechariah 14, 9 through 12. Zechariah 14, verses 9 to 12. Um, Mrs. Grummer, I'll come back to you in a second. Patty, what was your thought about this uh, chapter? I, I thought it was very interesting. I haven't, you know, based on the <coughs> stuff through this, I've never seen, you know, all the different kinds. I mean, I knew they were happening, but I just never saw it all come together like this and the, all the different judgments and the timing of it. It's been very interesting. I just, I had one thing I kind of wondered about on the judgment of the nation. Yes. Um, when they, uh, do you suppose, I don't think it really goes into this, but it, do you suppose that he brings nation by nation to judge, you know, like he brings like the United States and all the individuals. Uh, I think you think it's one one big uh, group, uh, Patty. One big group. Yeah. Mm. Not that he just brings nation by nation. Yeah. Okay, that was just kind of what I was. All right. Thanks, Patty. Okay, thank you. Want to say hi, Patty? Hi, Patty. Oh, hi, Patty. Hi, Patty. Oh, I wasn't. I was gonna ask. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll make a comment, honey. Sorry, Tammy. Well, no, Pentecost talks about the word nation and how it's. Um, it's not. used as peoples, mm -hmm. so that contrast is the Gentile nations versus Israel. Mm -hmm. These are the people that are living at the time of the end of the tribulation who are being judged, um, whether it's Israel or the nations in contrast to Israel. Right. Okay. So anyone who's not Israel would be nations. Mm -hmm. right. All right, so I got Mrs. Grommer, right? I got Jacob um, for their comments, and Patty called in. Thanks, Patty, for calling in. John, how about you? Thoughts you have? Uh, well, you know, it's, uh, it was a good chapter. Um, you know, one of the things I, I've been dealing with many people for a number of years is what we talked about today, the problem with the misinterpretation of Matthew 24 and 25. So yes. many people today, and so much of the church today, believes that, that is the rapture, and it absolutely is not. In right. fact, we do not find a rapture in any of the three synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. There's, there is a mention of it, allusion to it in, in the Gospel of John, and that's it in terms of the gospels. Uh, but somebody misquote these verses and say it's the rapture, right. and, I mean, it's, and it's not. I mean, it's, and it's coming from, honestly, it's coming from people that within independent, I mean, churches that believe, yeah. right. have a proper view, a pre mill view of, of the rapture, of churches that have the, in their doctrinal statement, they believe in the right position, but yet some of the people within the church are, are confused. Yeah, you know. there's uh, so much misunderstanding. It's one of the most misunderstood passages in, in Scripture. I mean, now when we when we step away from the, the, the people, the dispensational churches, the people that are come from pre-mill pre churches, that even gets worse. I mean, the, you know, the covenant of the church, the people, the people that believe that the church and Israel are, are kind of combined, and it gets, a, gets even foggier, you know, in what, what they're right. teaching. But, uh, yeah, yeah. If, you, uh, if you confuse that passage and think that the rapture is in there, then, yes, you could go with them. Uh, covenant theology, you can go with uh, mm -hmm. um, 
kingdom now yeah. theology. Yeah. You could say that, yes, mm-hmm. that the you know, replacement yes. theology, of course, you can, awesome. the postmodernity, you can take it off. Mm-hmm. It all fits in if you, yeah, if you twist that mm-hmm. around. Pacio, though. Well, uh, as w- what you're talking about, the, the covenant theology churches, from what I've seen uh, from uh, talking to people, is that uh, they don't believe there is a millennium. They don't believe there is a rapture. Right. So I mean, that, that, that's the whole subject is, uh, you know, <laughs> you know, they believe that uh, Christ is going to return one day, and it's he's going to select. Uh, mm-hmm. He's going to select uh, those who are saved, and. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then uh, destroy. Uh, yeah, that's after man brings in the utopian society. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the same Which idea. We're not going to do. The same idea. And, and uh, even if you don't understand uh, all of the judgments, mm-hmm. in which I certainly don't, uh, you can't skip over so much scripture. No, you can't. Uh, and and say, well, the mm-hmm. the millennium is not going to happen. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, that's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. It is. It is. I miss Warren. Some thoughts you might have. Were you finished, Bill? Yeah. yeah. Thoughts you have about this, uh, this, this chapter 24 here in the book? I think it's really um, great because it makes you understand exactly right. what these things are. It's mm-hmm. like uh, having an outline right. or uh, a map, mm-hmm. looking at a map and seeing exactly the things that, you, you know, are and where they are, and, and what they're there for. And so uh, I think it makes it so clear, because uh, many times you can read the Bible, and if you don't un- have that understanding in the back of your mind, mm-hmm. uh, it, you can lead to anything, right. and that's what's mm-hmm. happened in, in, in the church, right. that, mm-hmm. that people just don't understand. Mm-hmm. And another thing I, I, I observed that came t- to my mind is that how serious is all this the judgment of the Lord mm-hmm. that everybody who does not know Jesus as their Savior are going to spend mm-hmm. eternity in hell mm-hmm. and and uh, there's judgment on all the nations you know the, on on our our country and everybody in the whole world that that the judgment's coming and we just have to win people individual people to the Lord mm-hmm. and not worry too so much about what's happening in in the world scene but the spiritual uh thing about it is that people are going to go to to eternity without christ they're going to die in their sin Mm -hmm. they're going and forever and ever and is that serious very serious that's Mm -hmm. very serious and i think we should be uh, as we study this Mm -hmm. we should be more serious about it right Mm -hmm. that's right Justine, thoughts you might have about this this chapter we discussed here? Oh, no. Um, well, I thought it was interesting of how in the Bible it goes into, like it was mentioned earlier, it goes into certain detail with the different judgments. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. But I think that that was also meant for a reason. Because mm-hmm. um, even now, if you look at the churches now, sometimes we forget, you know, how serious it will be, like it has already mentioned. Mm-hmm. But it's a reminder on what is going to happen, right. how God mm-hmm. is already made to how it's already planned out, but, yes. and what certain things were already set in motion, and how it was interesting. Mm-hmm. Yes, it is very, very interesting, very serious, somber subject here. Mm-hmm. Amount, what else do you have about uh, this, uh, this section? I thought it was, I, it was very interesting that he had this in-between place with the Mm-hmm. Great white throne is going to be. But you understand why he's saying that? Because no. heaven and earth fled. In, in Revelation oh, yeah, new heaven. Uh, 20. Uh, no, no, not new heaven and new earth. Revelation, what was it, 20, verse 14? 2012, I think. 2012. As far as, you know, the heaven and earth fled from this. Mm-hmm. That, what do you mean they fled? Well, okay. It's scripture in Revelation. Let me see if we can find it here. Revelation 2011. 2011. 2011. 2011. And I saw a great white. It's 2011. That's right. Thank you, Tammy. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat, sat on it, from whose face the earth and heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. So that's his 21, support verse. 21. Revelation 20, verse 11. You see that? Yeah, I read that too before I was reading. But yes, that, that's interesting. He's looking at this very closely here in Revelation 20. 
11 and believes that there's this great way of throwing takes place between heaven and earth. I've never heard that. You know, yeah. you know but there's a support place. text, you know. But but the, the point is, and what's going to have the people that are, the, the reprobates of the millennial age will have to be somehow taken there to the judgment, which of course this judgment doesn't take place all that long, so it just a, won't be a problem for God to deal with that, uh, that problem. It's not really a problem. Um, Tammy. Well, I'm on my the same same thought as far as the neo charismatic. Okay, good. As when I was um, when actually when you were talking about this, we were talking about the judgment mm -hmm. of the nation of Israel. Yes. And they generally get um, the church in Israel mixed up. I mean, this fits in with a lot of those groups that um, John was talking about, mm -hmm. but it, it it's but that group is like. Now it's all blended together into right. what's called mm -hmm. neo-charismatics, which is beyond charismatics. And they don't always necessarily demonstrate mm -hmm. the gifts, but they still believe in them. Um, but the, the verse in Ezekiel where it says, And I will purge out from among you the rebels, and then that transgress against me. See, they, they think that they're somehow going to usher in the kingdom. They're they're largely post millennialists. Yes, they are. And so consequently, these rebels are anyone that doesn't follow their their mm -hmm. their path. And it was interesting because it made me think of a passage that I had seen someone post um, a comment on the Bible for Today page on mm -hmm. Facebook, and they were quoting from the NIV or the one of the modern versions. Mm -hmm. And it was from Second Thessalonians 2, 3. I want to read that. This is, it's very interesting. So this demonstrates their confusion. Um, it says, um, in, the, in the King James, it says, uh, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Well, they changed that in the NIV. That's why I got this. Uh, it says, um, don't let anyone deceive you in any way, for that will, day will not come until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed. So it, there, it seems like it's a tie-in with this passage in Ezekiel, which mm -hmm. was talking about the judgment of Israel, but they're, they're applying it to... A broader scope. Yeah, they misapply it, don't they? And, and mm -hmm. I've seen, I saw this all along here. Yes. Because um, there's a certain presidential candidate that happens to be a um, you know, charismatic. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And and um, I was looking up some information on him last night. Mm -hmm. And um, and so when I was reading this, which I was also doing last night, mm -hmm. I noticed that. Um, you know, a lot of these characteristics fit right in there. They were talking about one of the ministries of the church that he was a part of was um, they were talking about feeding and clothing the refugees of Syria and how mm. that was, uh, they were applying the passages in Matthew and just, mm -hmm. you know, completely twisting, you know, the, mm -hmm. the gospel. And, and this amphitorium at the school where they have this ministry probably seated 10,000 people, mm. and it was full. Mm -hmm. So these students are coming to this, mm -hmm. and as, as far as I know, it was a secular university, mm -hmm. so it's just very peculiar. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's how Satan is using mm. um, these, these types of churches to direct and, mm -hmm. and into the one world right. system. Right. Any more thought? Uh, yeah. I, would, uh, I don't have any thoughts because I miss most of class. Okay, that's that's not a problem. Just be, just be careful here when you uh, when you get when you answer that. Um, this is that mean? Um, be a bomb? I'm not sure what's going what's going to happen. But uh, any more thoughts that we have about uh, this um this um this chapter? Oh, there's a lot of them. <laughs> any more thoughts, sir? Uh, do you have uh, Miss Grummer? Hey, Bruce, how you doing? Come on in. Hi. I want to say thanks. We want to say thank you for having this class. Okay. Yeah. Super. Oh, hello. Okay. Hello. That's great. Sorry to interrupt you. That's great. Um, Ms. Drummer, more thoughts? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say thank you for having this class. Uh, I'm a little bit nervous about it. Uh, I'm not sure what's going to happen. Uh, I'm not sure what's going to happen. Uh, I'm not sure what's going to happen. Uh, I'm not sure what's going
Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. I'm glad, glad you're able to come. Glad you're able to see us today and watch us. Um, anyone else have any additional thoughts we have? We have John John Watkins back here. Lord, we'll keep on, and Justine as well. <laughs> keep on praying that uh, he's helpful. Be at a constant level and he could be uh, keep out of the hospitals. And, uh, well, I saw a doctor this morning. He was very happy with, with my progress right now. Thanks. I'm better now than I was a year ago when everything started. Okay. Praise the Lord. So. Amen. That's good news. Uh, Mr. Winograd called, called me at home. He did. And I had quite a talk. Oh, great. That's good. <laughs> and he said to say hello. Okay. Well, hi, Rob. Thanks for saying hi. You know, maybe watching this today. I'm not sure. Uh, all right, let's, um, let's close with prayer. Uh, Father, we want to thank thee today for the word of God. Father, we want to thank thee for the promise that we have within thy word of, of redemption and of salvation. Uh, we do ask that you would work in the hearts of <coughs> those people that you will bring across our path. Uh, they need salvation. Allow us to be able to be a proper uh, testimony before them. And we do ask that we give us words to talk with them and communicate the gospel with them. Uh, we do ask that you would uh, allow us to have uh, hearts that are willing to do what thou would have us do. In Jesus' name, amen.